the campus observatory was built in 1896, about 127 years ago. Uh, it was initially built at a cost of $15,000, and most of that actually went to buy the telescope that uh, is still here in the building. The observatory was mostly built as a teaching tool. Sir G.W. Myers, who was the first director of the observatory, taught a class in celestial mechanics. Uh, and it was actually one of the most popular celestial mechanics classes in the entire country at the time. In 1903, Joel Stebbins came to the observatory and he began work with uh, Joseph Kuntz and F.C. Brown uh, on a selenium self-atometer, which was used to measure the light from celestial objects electronically. Uh, now, the first object that they measured was uh, the moon, so something really bright in the sky. Then they measured the brightness of Halley's Comet in 1910. Um, and then in 1912, they used the selenium uh, salvatometer to measure the light from four variable stars. Later on, they replaced the selenium salvatometer with a photoelectric photometer. Before Stebbins, so the method used for measuring the brightnesses of stars would be to take a picture of the stars using photographic cells. So basically, um, not photographic film, but instead we would use glass plates that would be coated with photographic sensitive chemicals. And then to measure the brightness of, of stars, what you'd have to do is basically compare the, how big the image of each star was on the field to kind of say, okay, this star is, that one's about that big, that one's about that big, and we know how bright that star is, so this one is about this much brighter or dimmer than that one. That's how you'd measure brightness. It's very inaccurate. With the photometer, uh, actually able to basically have the brightness from the star, the light from the star, hitting the photometer and inducing an electric current, then you can accurately measure this electric current with a galvanometer and therefore get a quantitative measurement of the brightness. That allows the brightness to be, of the star to be measured much more accurately. Now today, we have CCDs, which are basically counting photons. Uh, so they're even more accurate. Uh, but Stebbins was a huge step forward in terms of the accuracy of measuring the brightness of stars. The observatory was named a National Historic Landmark due to the groundbreaking work of Joel Stebbins and his collaborators. Uh, the importance of being able to measure the brightness of stars uh, directly rather than simply inferring it from a image on a plate is incredibly important to astronomy. And the importance of that can't be understated. Uh, and so his groundbreaking work is what has made this place so important to the history of astronomy. The last time the observatory was used for research was actually in 1967 to observe a variable star. But since then, the, the observatory has only been used for teaching and outreach. Uh, every semester, we have hundreds of students come through the observatory for uh, night observing sessions and solar observing sessions. Uh, we have uh, classes that make use of the observatory for uh, advanced observing projects. In our advanced astronomy lab class, students have uh, created images of objects like the Ring Nebula or the uh, Hercules Cluster. Even though it's a hundred years later and the technology that the students are using to create the images has improved dramatically, it's great to see that the uh, astronomical traditions here at the University of Illinois are continuing and that they're continuing to use the same great old telescope.